Hey there friends and thanks for joining me again and today I have my board of the timeline of buying a house. I have been talking to you about you know buying a house recently and so I wanted to do a quick you know intro video to the new series on buying a house from start to finish and a lot of the videos out there kind of start in the middle and so that's why I wanted to start with the very very beginning and kind of walk through the entire process the pros and cons of doing things differently and you know just help you get the right house and the right mortgage and everything else and so we're going to talk about most of these topics and actually some of them I already have done so we already have a pretty good head start on this so the first thing it starts with is a dream it really does start with a person who has the dream to just be a homeowner and so that's where the whole thing begins it's like the little seed that's going to grow into this huge cool plant all right the next thing that you want to do after you have that dream is to buy down your debts and to build good credit. See, by buying down your debts, you're gonna actually be building credit while you're doing it. So if you have any debts whatsoever, student loans, car loans, pretty much anything, credit cards, anything, that's gonna make it to where you don't have as much money to borrow for a house, and it's gonna mess up your debt to income ratio. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is address your debts, and then you're gonna to wanna, to, you know, um, decrease how much money you owe on those, and while you're doing this, again, it's going to be automatically helping your credit. So if you want to know more about your credit, you can consult another video I already did. I might do another video on it um, in a different way this time, but we'll talk about that later. So yeah, be buying down your debts and, you know, building some good credit. Then, or while you're doing this even, it depends on what your timeline is on when you want to be buying this house. Some people may want to buy down their debts all the way to zero and then start saving. Some people want to save while continuing to buy down their debts. It neither is necessarily a right or a wrong answer. It really just depends on your timeline and what you really, really, really wanna get accomplished in your buying your house. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do, of course, um, after saving the money, which I do have another video on if you want the steps on how, to, how I save money, which is very, you know, helpful to me. Uh, shop for a mortgage. This is probably one of the areas where people go wrong the most often. A lot of people don't like shop around for their mortgages. They just go to whatever bank they go to, apply, and then that's that. Well, if you don't shop around for your mortgage, it can actually end up costing you thousands of dollars, not only in the short run, like while you actually are going through the whole process, but it can actually end up costing you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the long run by not having shopped around for the best deal. It's kind of like when we're buying something, if we're looking for a specific appliance and we look at how much does it cost at this store, how much does it cost at that store, we want to compare those two things. Well, it's the same thing. So this starts with, you know, shopping around for your mortgage. That way you get the right deal and the right mortgage for your house. It's, in my opinion, just as important as shopping for the house, shopping for the right mortgage. So yeah, there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, we have whether we want an adjustable rate or a fixed rate, you know, what you can actually afford to spend on your house, what your goals are, you know, with having this house. Um, let's see the loan term, whether or not you're willing to pay points, what rates they all have, we're gonna address all of that. So this is, again, the thing I'm most excited to talk about, you know, shopping for the mortgage and making sure you get the right one. So the next thing you wanna do after you've shopped around is apply. So that's like choosing the right company, you know, you wanted to buy that appliance through, that would be the same thing. So you've shopped around at the different companies, now you wanna actually apply at one of them. So once you apply, they're going to tell you either you can or can't get the mortgage, or they can, but, which means you might have to have some issues fixed. Maybe they'll say, yes, we can give you a mortgage, but you don't apply, or you don't qualify for the highest, or you qualify only for the higher interest rate, whereas if you had maybe better credit, you would qualify for a lower interest rate, that sort of thing. So if you apply for your mortgage and you find out there's something you need to do, maybe you need to save more money, maybe you need to fix your credit a little more, whatever, not everyone is going to have this next step, but if there are issues, now would be the time to fix them and then reapply as needed. But again, not everybody's going to have those two steps. Some people will just apply and it'll just work out right from the beginning. So the next step would be you are pre-qualified or even better yet, pre-approved. So we'll talk about the differences between the two and why that's so important. Pre-qualified in a nutshell basically means you've applied and so they're saying yes based on the small amount of information we've gotten from you. You can probably spend X amount on a house and then you can take that to your realtor and then you can start shopping. But pre-approved is um, when you actually apply for the mortgage and you give them a ton of your paperwork. You give them your 
you know, pay stubs and your um, tax returns and all this stuff. And then they know for sure how much exactly you can spend. Being pre-approved can save a lot of headaches because sometimes people will go and say, well, I spend this or I make this amount of money. And then they'll take that letter to the realtor and they'll say, okay, you can spend, you know, whatever. And then they'll go under contract for that house, but then once they actually start submitting all the paperwork to the bank, they'll realize that they can't actually spend as much as they originally estimated, and so that number goes down, and then they can't buy the house that they were under contract for. So yeah, that can actually cost a fair amount of money, especially depending on how far you've gone with your contract. So being pre-approved is by far a better idea than being pre-qualified. So yes, once you get one of the two again, uh, ideally pre-approved, you can now start shopping for your house. You can find a realtor, you can go out and shop for houses, which is really a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. And then the next one would be choosing the right property. This is another area where I think a lot of people go wrong because you can get distracted a lot by the housing market when you go and you look at the different houses and you can end up with one that doesn't really fit your goals. And so, yeah, this is another one I'm excited to talk about is how to stick with what your goals are and how to choose the right property, one that's going to appreciate well, one that's going to not cost too much, one that you're going to have a lot of peace in so that you don't end up having a lot of, you know, issues and problems and things like that. So yeah, choosing the right property is actually really important, of course. So once you find the right property, you make an offer for it and the seller will either counter offer or will accept your offer or reject it depending on the market. And so there's a lot to do with making an offer that can help make your, you know, um, offer more attractive. If you make an offer in a housing market where everything is hot, it's entirely different than making an offer in a housing market which is more down. So we'll probably talk about both and strategies on how to get the best deal in either market that you're in. Or helping to ensure you get the house that you want if you're in a house mar housing market that's hot. And again, if they counter offer different, you know, strategies you can do to help the seller want to work with you, etc. And then eventually end up in contract. So once you're under contract for your house, you're going to have some specific things that you have to accomplish before you can actually go to closing. There's going to be some inspections, some appraisals, you know, you have to get all your financing in order if you haven't already been pre-approved. And then, you know, there could be some renegotiations. If some things come up on the house, maybe you need them to fix some things or you need them to drop the price because the appraisal doesn't come back correctly or whatnot. So there's a lot of different things that can, you know, go awry in the contract stage. And so we'll talk about those things and, you know, different things that you can help to do to make that cheaper too, because there are some things that you can negotiate that a lot of people don't know that you can negotiate to actually help save you money. And then the last step would be going to closing. This is what they call the signing your life away. You sit down at a table with a whole bunch of people and you sign paperwork and you read and you sign and you read and you sign. In a lot of areas, sometimes they'll even give you the paperwork a day or two days ahead so that you can have a chance to read through it all so that you're not like overwhelmed with having to read like four hours worth of stuff all at once. Uh, but sometimes they don't give you the paperwork ahead of time so you need to read it right then. So, if everything goes well with closing and you like all the stuff that's in that paperwork and everything, you sign your name probably a thousand times, they make a whole bunch of copies of the paperwork and they give it to you, and then you end up this nice happy person with your brand new key to this dream house that you've always wanted. So, with the mortgage that you've always wanted. <laughs> So anyway, that is the timeline for buying a house. It's really not as grueling as it sounds. From start to finish, the whole thing can take not a lot of time. It can really depend on how much money a person already has saved, how much time it takes to buy down debts. This whole thing could end up just a couple of short months. Or for other people, it could take two, three, five years to get from one stage all the way to the other. So again, it really depends on what the situation is where you start out. But there are some things that you definitely want to keep in mind throughout the whole process. While you're doing this process, you don't want to change jobs. A lot of people like to see that you're on the job for a long, a long amount of time. So if you apply for a mortgage and you've only been on your job for three, five months, even a year, they may not like that. Like where I applied for my mortgage, they wanted to see that you were on a job for two years for them to really count that income. So definitely want to not make sure that you're not changing jobs. The second thing you want to do is you don't want to borrow other money. So don't be racking money up on your credit card. Don't be buying new cars, you know, stuff like that. You don't want to be even applying for credit. So you don't want to get, you know, furniture payments or anything else. 
So yeah, don't apply for credit, don't be borrowing money, and then don't be co-signing on other people's loans either. So if you have a child, or a friend, or a neighbor, or you know, anyone, you definitely don't want to be co-signing on their loans because that can actually mess up your debt to income ratio too and can make it to where you can borrow less and stuff like that. So those are things that you definitely want to consider not doing if you can. And if you did have to do any of those, do it way in the very, very beginning stages. Don't be doing it once you've already gotten pre-qualified and start, you know, applying because if you were to get pre-approved for something and then buy a car and then you put an offer on a house, again, that could end up just like what I was talking about earlier, how if you were pre qualified and then, you know, um, they realize you weren't able to borrow as much money as they originally thought, so your whole contract could fall through. And then all the money that you've spent while under contract, you know, the money that you spent for inspections and appraisals and stuff all goes down the drain. And again, that can be hundreds of dollars. So definitely make sure not to do the things that, you know, you really shouldn't do. So there you go, there's my intro to the whole house buying process and what it's like. I'm certainly not by any means a professional, I'm just a person who's bought houses before, you know, um, in a hot market and also now I'm, I'm, well in a hot market now, or when I first bought my house it was a much slower market and so I really feel like I had a lot of experience with this whole thing. And then another thing is whenever I do something I really dive into it. I way overthink things probably and do tons and tons of research to find out everything I can possibly know about it. I'm not just going to walk into a bank and have them say, oh well this is the kind of mortgage you probably need and be like, okay, you know, not really know. I'm going to educate myself to make sure I'm getting the best deal, I know what I want, and I'm not going to be sold something either by, you know, a realtor trying to get me to buy the wrong house or by a loan officer trying to sell me the wrong mortgage. So I want to help you with this information because it's not something that the professionals out there are really willing to help you do. You know, they're really, I hate to say it, but kind of like wolves in sheep's clothing. They sound like they're for you and then when it really comes down to it, they're just really in it for their own commissions. So since I have no financial stake in what house you buy or what kind of mortgage you get, I just really want to help you save the money that you can and get the right property and the right mortgages and things like that. I'm really excited to share this information that I've learned and give you maybe a different perspective on things than some of the professionals would. So anyway, I look forward to seeing you on the rest of the series. I'm Frugal Green Girl. We'll see you next time.